Hi there. In today's video, we'll be designing a trifold restaurant menu card in Adobe InDesign. So let's get started. I already have the create a new document window open here, but let me explain to you what we're planning to do. Otherwise, you'll be confused while we're doing it. So this is going to be the outside panel in which page one is going to be the flap that will be folded. And uh, because it will sit under the front cover when folded, we need to make it slightly narrower than the other two panels. Page 2 will be the back of the outside panel. So when folded, only page 3, which is the front cover, and page 2 will be visible at all times. You can also see that I have tagged them with these letters B, A and A. This means that I'll have to create two master pages, A and B. And the only reason I needed to do it is because page one and page six, which is going to be at the back of page one, are going to be slightly narrower. Rest of the pages will be of the same width. Let's move on to the inside panel now. The inside panel has pages four, five and six. And like I mentioned earlier, page 6 is going to be narrower since it's at the back of page 1 and will be folded. Also, you can find a similar master setup, only this time it is not BAA, but AAB. And the dashed vertical lines you see here are the points where they will be folded. Alright, so let's get back to InDesign and create other pages. I'm going to select letter size under print tab and let's change the units to millimeters and let's also click on landscape orientation. Now the best way to do the calculation is to divide the width by three because it's a trifold menu remember and we don't have to do this calculation manually that's the best part. All we need to do is in the width field just type in a space and then forward slash which represents the division sign and uh, enter three and please don't press return at this point because if you do it it will create the document since we have other settings to take care of just click on pages and you'll find the calculated value ready in the width field so it comes to 93.133 millimeters which means every panel in the trifold menu will be of this width. But if you remember, we mentioned that one panel, which means two pages back to back, will be narrower. And to make it narrower, we need to make the rest four pages a little broader. So I'm going to add another millimeter here, hence 93.133 will become 94.133. So two panels will have this size and the narrower panel will be then 91.133, something we will set a little later. Okay, moving on, let's make six pages and uncheck the facing pages option. Let's also update the margins to 10 millimeters and uh, bleed to three millimeter and hit create. Okay, let me bring the pages panel out. You can see all our pages are separate and don't look like a trifold card yet. But don't worry, we're going to get there soon. You can also find that every page has the letter A mentioned, which means that A master has been applied to them. So let's add a B master now. Right click on the A master and from the drop down menu, select new master. Let the prefix be B and change the based on master option from none to a master. I'm sure you remember that we mentioned that one panel will be of a narrower size. So let's change the width to 91.133 millimeters here and hit OK. So we're going to apply B master to only two pages that are narrower than the rest. In fact, let me drag the window down for a better view. Let me take you to the setup I showed you earlier. Here we mentioned that page 1 and page 6 will be narrower. So let's apply master B to these two pages. So let's right click on page 1. And select the option apply master to pages. 
So we can apply B master to multiple pages at the same time. Change apply master option from A master to B master. And then enter the pages one, comma, and a space, and then six, and hit OK. And from the pop-up window, click on Use Master Page Size. You should now be able to see in the page's thumbnail that page 1 and page 6 have Master B applied to them. Alright, now we need to make two spreads of three pages like in a trifold menu. So to do that, first of all, click on the burger menu in the pages panel at the top right corner and uh, uncheck the allow document pages to shuffle option. Next, double click on page 2 to select it and drag it to the right of page 1 and it will sit there. Similarly, drag page 3 next to page 2. So our outside panel is ready to take content and it's in the BAA format as we discussed. Similarly, drag pages 5 and 6 to form the spread. And now our inside panel is also ready as per our planning in the AAB format. We're going to start with the inside panels, but before that, focus on the layers panel on the right. If you don't find the layers panel, just go to window and you'll find it sitting there somewhere. Or you can even enter the shortcut F7 to get it. Alright, now double click on layer 1 and rename it to background and hit OK. Once we're done with our content, we'll add a background texture and for that we'll need this layer. Click on create a new layer button at the bottom of the layers panel and then double click on the new layer and rename it type. Although we have renamed it type, we'll still be adding images to this layer. Now lock the background layer by clicking next to the eye icon and uh, have the type layer selected. Let's grab a rectangle tool and make a rectangle in the center panel. Ensure that your ruler is activated. If it isn't, just go to view and click on show rulers option. Mine is already activated, hence it's showing me the Hide Rulers option instead. The shortcut to show rulers is Command R on a Mac or Control R on a PC. Now drag a guide from the left ruler and release it at the center point of this rectangle. And then delete the rectangle because we don't need it anymore. Grab the pen tool and let's drag another guide from top and place it at 30mm position from top for now. We might have to adjust it later. We're not sure about this yet. Now using the pen tool, make a shape touching the corners of the panel and the center point we've just established. Also ensure that you take the bleed into account. Now let's add a fill to it. So double click on the fill option to reveal the color picker and pick a color of your choice. I'm going to pick orange or perhaps yellow. I think we need to extend it a tiny bit. So using the move tool, drag the tip of the shape down. Now grab the text tool and type in menu and change the font to Roboto Black and update the font size to something suitable and then place it on top of the shape we just made. And then center align the text using the alignment option on top. Next, using the text tool, make a text box on the left panel. Now we need to insert a table in here since we need to add the items and the description of the items on one side and the price on the other. So we'll need two columns and a few rows as well for the items. So let's go to table and click on insert table. Update the body rows to 10 for now. We can always uh, change it later. And the columns to 2. One for the item and the other one for the price. And hit OK. For price, we won't need such a wide column. So click, hold and drag this line to the right. 
and then drag in the column on the right to narrow it down. Let's also drag the text box all the way down as we'll be needing the entire column for this. We don't really need the table with these lines showing, so click on the table anywhere and use Command A on a Mac or Control A on a PC to select all the cells. Or we can just click and drag to select them all. And you see this grid on top with blue lines around and black inside. Click on the black ones to make them blue. And then go to the stroke option and change the fill to none. And you shall find the black lines on your table changing to blue thin lines. Now go to window and then type in tables and then table. A separate table panel will open. From here update the row height to 14. And I'll need a little padding inside the cell because I don't really like my text touching the line. So let's add 1.411 millimeter padding. And uh, also the text alignment to be center. Using the text tool, I'm going to type in starters and change the font to Xylem. And let's update the text size to 18 points. And I want this yellow color to be applied to the text. So select the text and use the eyedropper tool to sample the yellow color and then click once on the text to steal the color. Since I'll be using this setting again, it's always better to make a paragraph style for repeated text styles. So let's go to window and then styles and then paragraph styles. With your text selected, click on create a new style and then double click on the new style created to reveal a pop-up. Here, let's rename the style to menu heading. And here you can see all the style settings that have been applied to this paragraph style under the style setting tabs. And then hit OK. Since it's just a demonstration, I don't really have real text. So using the text tool, Let's make a text box here and then right click and add some placeholder text. Now copy some text for our menu item by selecting the text and then entering command C on a Mac or control C on a PC to copy and then paste it here using command V on a Mac or control V on a PC and then make it all capital letters and change the font to Roboto Medium and also update the font size to 10 points. We'll need a paragraph style for this as well. So with the text selected, go to Paragraph Styles and create a new style and double click to enter the settings and update the style name to Menu Item and hit OK. Let's pick some more text from the placeholder text for description using the copy command you've learnt a while ago and then paste it here. Let's select the text and update the font to Roboto Lite and update the font size to 9 points. We'll also change the color of the font to the same yellow that we used earlier. Make another paragraph style and name it Menu Description and hit OK. Next, select this whole item along with the description and copy and paste them a few times to fill in the cells. Now let's enter the price and uh, change the font to Roboto Medium and font size to 10 points. And let's also quickly make another paragraph style for the price and name it Item Price. And since it's price, we need to change the alignment as well. So go to indents and spacing and change the alignment to right and hit OK. Now enter the price of the rest of the items and select the prices altogether and click on item price paragraph style and the style will be applied to them. Let's drag the next row to make some space between the two categories 
let's see if it will look good or not you can always change it later if you want to so here I'm going to type in barbecue as my next uh, heading and click on menu heading and you see how it applies the style so let's select it and change it to all capital letters from the toolbar above now copy this whole thing from top and paste it here along with the prices let's add another item here since we have some space actually I don't like this space here so let's drag the row back to its original size and add another item here alright one panel is done in the center I want a nice big image so let's grab the rectangle frame tool and drag to cover the entire panel including the bleed then go to file and then place and locate the image from your computer we need to send this image to back so let's right click on the image and go to arrange and then send to back at this point I'd also like to add a drop shadow to this panel so select it and right click and go to effects and then drop shadow from the settings change the angle to 90 degrees size to 1 mm x offset to 0 y offset to 1 mm and distance to 1 mm once you're done head to bevel and emboss option on the left and change the style to outer bevel and hit ok for the panel on the right we're going to just copy the entire piece on the left panel and paste it here so select the entire piece on the left and hold shift and option on a Mac or shift and alt on a PC and then click and drag the piece to the right. Now since this panel is slightly narrower than the rest we'll have to adjust the column and push it in a little and change the items to main course and beverages. Now press the letter W to preview the inner panel. I think it looks pretty decent. So let's head to the outer panel and much like earlier we're going to copy the whole text of menu items and description along with price and paste it on top in the center panel and rename the two items to dessert and salads. For the panel on the left I'll grab the rectangle frame tool and make a rectangle covering the entire panel including the bleed and then go to file and then place and locate the image from the computer. Once the image is here select the white arrow key to click and adjust the part of the image you want to be in the frame. Now grab the text tool and make a text box to the lower half of the front panel. Here we're going to type in the restaurant name and, and description if any. We also find the address and contact details in this section usually. So I'm going to type in an imaginary address and also add a home delivery contact because these days home delivery is anyway quite popular. And then finally make a rectangle on top using the rectangle frame tool including the bleed on top and then go to file and place and locate the image from the computer to place it here. Perfect. Let's hit W to preview both our pages. I think our menu card looks pretty decent. Don't you think so? It's time to add a texture to our menu card since it's almost ready. So unlock the background layer and hide the type layer. And with the background layer selected, grab the rectangle frame tool and make a large frame covering the entire page, including the bleed. Now go to file and then place and locate the texture image from the computer. I think we need to lower the opacity of the texture so right click on the image and uh, go to effects and then transparency and then lower the opacity to about 30% and hit OK. 
Now make the type layer visible to check how it looks. What do you think, guys? Do let me know in the comment section. Let's add the same texture to the inside panel as well, much like we did for the outside, and then lower its opacity to 30%. All right, so now our menu card is ready. So let's export it along with the crop marks so that we are able to send it to the printer. So go to file and then export. The format here should be Adobe PDF print and you can even change the name to something else should you want to and then hit save. And from the export PDF option, you can either select high quality print option or even press quality option should be fine. I'm going to stick to high quality print. Ensure that you select spreads from the pages option and not pages because then the final output will be on six different pages and that's not what we want. So select spreads and then move on to marks and bleeds tab and check crop marks and hit export. Now open the exported file and you should be able to see the crop marks for the printer who would print and slice off the corners of the crop marks. And congratulations, that completes our tutorial. Alright guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video and have learned something from it. So please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Until we meet again on Sunday, goodbye and thanks for watching.